Hi everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Amina Motella and I have an absolutely wonderful guest here today. And I wanna introduce you to my new friend as well, Alana Melville. Media Villa. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. So my husband's last name is Melville, but I didn't take it. So I'm not a Melville. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So, 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 sort of. But my name is Alana Media Villa or Media Villa, and then Melville as my husband's. I just put it in there on Facebook. I love it. It's <laughs> wonderful. I actually did not know that. I know now. You know okay, that. Okay. Now yeah. I know that. Okay. So, well, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're my new friend too. I mean, I met you in Miami. I met you saying like Puerto Rico to VG to somebody else and I was like huh you had such a big smile on your face and and then that's how I met Amina yes and that was like a couple weeks ago and then we hung out a bunch of Miami and then here and just continuing to only two a couple weeks ago it really is Seems only like a couple a weeks ago I, it's just been a lot of like experiences together yeah. in that amount of time but yeah it's been a short amount of time and amazing ones and great company great energy we are talking from Puerto Rico right now in old San Juan and this is one of these old magnificent buildings that we're in it's spectacular and the energy is just outstanding it is yeah it so is. Puerto so Rico is magical I mean here it's there's we wouldn't we've talked about the fact that Puerto Rico is one of the the tips of the Bermuda Triangle so it's just like it's yeah. just magic and you can I've been to a lot of really beautiful places and you know this place is definitely beautiful but there's just something about the magic and I know I'm from here but I don't know other well, people seem to say it yeah it is very magical that's exactly how I've been describing old San Juan is magical just there's something it's you, you until you come here will you realize what it feels like and it, it is truly special so I'm just so happy to be here and you've been wonderful and I just thought you know we really got to have you on the show and let everybody know who you are and what you're doing because you have this incredible energy about you that shows through the way now I don't know a lot to truly don't even know a lot about we're all finding out about um, each other together <laughs> Atlanta and her work but I know a little bit and you have a film production company and you've done a lot of work in your past prior to crypto so there's I mean we'll talk about how cryptocurrencies has come into to um, part of your world as well but you are a film production company and you've been doing this for many years and you're a hard working girl I am yes yeah I I li it, it's like it's easy when you like what you do yeah yeah I've been producing uh, I've been just a filmmaker for a long time behind the camera you know doing everything production uh, holding stuff carrying boxes the whole thing just so yeah tell us everything. how did you start out like what where go so, let's go a little bit back in the beginning well, um, I, I got pregnant when I was 20, and my husband, then boyfriend, was still in college. I was still in college. I dropped out of college to move to New York, which is where he lived, to have her. Um, but I was completely cut off from my family for being, getting pregnant, and it wasn't a great time. But he was going to college. So I started working because we had to. Like one of us needed to finish school, the other one needed to like pay for the midwife and the diapers and the food and all that stuff. Um, and so I started working at that time and just doing graphic design for different companies around Brooklyn. I was living in Brooklyn at the time. So I was designing menus, I was designing logos, I was going to laundromats and I had a little menu of of services that I would do, like logo, flyer, you know, all these different things. And so, um, and yeah, so that's how I started making money. And then when I moved to California, I was living in New York um, between 2006, 2009. The, co the financial collapse happened in 2008 and New York City just looked, you could feel it in New York, you know, 2008, you could mm -hmm. really feel. And 
my husband lost his job. Um, people were not paying for little logos and stuff anymore. And so we decided to move to Silicon Valley because my husband's from Santa Cruz. And in Santa Cruz, you know, I saw that Silicon Valley was booming. They were, did not look anything like New York looked like. In fact, they looked like, I just saw every new supercar in every color just driving by mm -hmm. every day. And so I got a job at a video game company doing their graphics and their UI and their animations. And that's when I started getting into animation. And then doing their videos. We couldn't afford anybody to do our videos. Mm -hmm. So I was making all of our videos. And then we were in a building with a bunch of other startups. And then I started making everybody else's videos for, and then because I had my animation background, I was doing like superimposed graphics, mm -hmm. like somebody's texting and you can see the little, you've seen it a million times. Well, I've done it a million times. Right. Um, wow. So that's how I started was really But not everyone was doing it a million times back then. Not back then. Back then we were still, you know, looking at what Apple was doing, looking at what, you know, um, a few other people were doing some movies were starting to come out with that kind of like animation because you know smartphones weren't a thing back then and texting just wasn't as a part of people's lives as it is now and being connected to a computer wasn't as a, as part of as much a part of people's lives so right. so yeah so i started doing their videos and everybody's videos and then um started my own company doing that producing videos for people's for tech companies specifically in silicon valley and then I got hired at Google while I had my business and then I had my job, my full-time job at Google and we still had clients at my business. So I was still running um, the production. We were doing a lot of customer stories, people using the tech and then I started getting more into the human side of tech. You know, what does tech, what does tech help us do? Mm -hmm. You know, how does it make our lives easier? How does it make our lives um, better somehow? And those were more the stories that I was interested in more than the technical stuff. And so I was at Google for four and a half years and then I did a lot of incredible things there, worked with the best teams around the world and also really got to see what tech can do around the world. Um, honestly, I got to see all the good stuff. I don't really have bad things to say about Google. I know everybody's like, yeah, Google, they're so evil. And I'm like, I don't know, I had a really great time. I worked on really great projects. I worked with really amazing people. I understand the, the concern of the centralization of so much power into sure. one organization. And that's part of the reason why I'm drawn into crypto and the blockchain and Bitcoin, mm -hmm. because I can see you know how how easily we can control a world with you know the smallest amount of of communication channels the smallest amount of like media channels um social media channels because then you just there's less places to to censor so yeah so i've you know in 2015 i just really started diving into bitcoin and what that means and um it's been seven years and now i moved to puerto rico last year uh, during the pandemic, left California. I was gone for 15 years from the island and then moved back. Yeah, because um, this is na you're native to Puerto Rico. I'm native to here, yeah. But I left when I was 20, when I got pregnant to New York, and then I never came back. And then I just stayed in the United States. But then I moved my company here because of the tax credits and, you know, sure, yeah. having a business in California and when it's, is, is really tough because the taxes are just very hard and the cost of living is very high so I was able to do well but when I found out about the tax benefits in Puerto Rico I felt like I could actually grow my company much faster if I didn't have to give half of my money to the government that seemed to not really manage it very well anyway. Well it's definitely a great incentive if you can do that and there's, yeah. there's quite a great community, uh, crypto community here in Puerto Rico which I got to know a little bit better going to um, the Crypto Mondays meetups and which you've taken me to so thank you for that and um, we did the NFT launch party the other night so just a, a great number of people I got to see in a short amount of time in this community that I've heard so much about actually and um, very supportive and very, so it's a great place I think it's a great place it I is mean, you see everything you see everything which is cool because you I feel like it helps me fine-tune my radar you know like if you yeah. are only around cool people then 
you know, you lose the you lose what it's like to feel be around somebody that isn't really cool. Yeah. And so to so yeah, there's a lot of fish in this in these in these waters. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> there certainly are, literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about, and this is why I really wanted to do this show with you is to. Um, talk about your project. You have an, uh, a great idea that you've come up with and it's a documentary and so please tell everybody what your documentary is about. What You can't talk about what it's called. You haven't named it yet, right? You don't have a title? I do have a title for it. And you can't talk about that yet? When is this video coming out? Uh, well, no, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um, well, we'll do one after. Okay. We'll do another review. Okay. Interview. Yeah. So my documentary is about Bitcoin mining and what is it why is it important why do people believe that it's um a, unsustainable to mine bitcoin where did those ideas come from are they true um what is the kind of garbage that mines put like all of it basically all of it there's a lot of information out there about bitcoin as you know as a tool for freedom as or maybe against bitcoin or you know there's there's a lot of like existential documentaries on them and they're very good and they're they've been done well and but for me i felt like the idea of like how what is what first of all why was bitcoin invented tell me what was the world going through at that time like really document that and then that starts and then how do you get a bunch of how do you convince a bunch of people to start mining this digital coin mm -hmm. like how do you how do you do that and how does it start and how does it start from people mining for, on their computers to opening huge data center size mines for you mining make a lot of money <laughs> yeah exactly so you make a lot of money but that happened pretty quickly you yeah. know i guess it's been it's been it's been a while but we're really going to dive into that and bitcoin i love i'm a huge fan huge fan of bitcoin but Bitcoin can still be a victim of 51% attack if more than 51% of the mines are centralized. Mm -hmm. So we're still not out of the out of the woods just yet with Bitcoin. And I want to really shine a light to mining and and get people encouraged to understand it, maybe do it if that's you know something that they want to do or they can do. Maybe support a DAO that is investing in, in decentralized mines around the world. So there's a lot of ways that people can get involved with mining that isn't necessarily like mining in their houses. Mm -hmm. And the documentary is gonna go into what that is. And I feel like even people in the crypto space don't quite understand mining really well. I know I didn't. You know, there's a lot of Absolutely. things to understand. Yeah. You know, it's like Bitcoin, and then there's the blockchain, there's a bunch well, of stuff. Well, <laughs> and I know there's a lot of people watching right now where they're they're probably thinking, what is she talking about? What is mining? You actually have, you actually have to mine Bitcoin. Yeah. So, um, and there's a whole educational element to this in the stages that we're at with with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, especially and you know and the way you know we've talked about this a few times, but a lot of everything stems from the creation of Bitcoin, and it's just moving forward from there. So, um, but the mining itself along with you know the person who's investing and buying you know you, you can't have bitcoin without the miner so no it's exactly a huge and important element too because mining is creating the actual algorithm for the cryptocurrency so just to give you i'm not going to do a whole education thing <laughs> on it right now but that's where it starts yeah so. yeah you need both and so it's almost like they're the they're the real world um representation of this digital mm -hmm. currency this digital gold so it's really important that we understand that when we're looking at really shifting our entire financial system to Bitcoin. So what does it what does that mean? What does that look like? What does it take? And so diving into that is something and, and what's proof of work versus proof of stake. And I don't really want to get into other chains or anything on the documentary because I feel like then we, that's that's a season. That's a whole season. That's right. <laughs> but I just want to really focus on specifically Bitcoin because it's the first. It's the one that um, I'm the most bullish on, you know, it's the grandfather. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. So I'm definitely starting with Bitcoin, but it's really, um, it's going to open the door for people to understand mining. And then when other blockchains are talking about people want needing miners or whatever, I believe people are going to be more prepared to understand what that means after understanding what Bitcoin mining is. Mm -hmm. And so you will explore other countries and miners as well, right? You're going to not just stay in the United States, you're going to get all 
Go all get all it. around. I get all of it. I want to get all of it. Like okay. I, I want to see. I want to see all of the people that are involved because that's something that you know. I, I go to a lot of tech conferences because I was in Silicon Valley for a long time, mm -hmm. and you know, it was either a tech conference that I was working at or a or a film conference that I was attending. It was still tech. And you see a lot of the same people at these conferences. And when you go to the Bitcoin conference, it's like you just see all kinds of people from all over the world. Yeah. And everybody looks different. And everybody is just like, even though we all look different, we're, we have this kind of similar thing that bonds us, which is yeah. wanting to see true and lasting change on this planet, you know? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what color you are, you know, if- We want to build a new world. Are <laughs> yeah. you in? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> like that feels really great about the community. And so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That's fantastic. And so now you were, you're at this, what stage are you at in the documentary? So I've already built out the story and a lot of the locations that we want to go in because that's the story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, where are we shooting? Who are we interviewing? Why are they doing it? You know, in the United States, we see Bitcoin as like a retirement fund, like, oh, I just buy it and hold it. But there are a lot of other countries in the world that see Bitcoin as their gateway to the outside world to be able to do commerce with other people in other countries. So. Or within their own country. Or within their own country, exactly. Yeah. At the value that they want without having to have the bank as an intermediary, without having to like surrender 30% of whatever so that they can turn it into another coin so that then they can uh, transact. I mean, we as Americans are so privileged and we just don't understand how privileged we are yeah. to use the dollar and to have that. But here in Puerto Rico, where we're talking a lot about colonization, you know, a lot of people talk about like cutting the cord to the United States, but nobody's talking talking about cutting the cord to the dollar. That's true decolonization. If we cut the cord to the United States, but we're still on some petrodollar, some some uh, currency that has been fully devalued on purpose. Dirty fiat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> then we're not really decolonized. We're still at their mercy. So for me, we really need to be talking about the money fix the money fix the world, right? And that's what we need to be um, really looking at when we're talking about freedom and decolonization. Yeah, very good. So there's a lot you're, you're, I mean, there's a lot that you can do with this documentary, clearly. I mean, there's the philosophical aspect to it as well. And, you know, because I know there's people who are questioning this whole new digital era and... Rightfully know, and, so. And, and rightfully so. Yeah. And don't want to let go of their fiat currency and want to keep, keep, you know, going on the way we've been going on. But we do need to educate and understand what that means. You know, we, we have a we have a fiat currency that's deflationary yeah. you know, and it's it's falling fast it's Very fallen fast. in my opinion but yeah um, <laughs> I love it. We're, we're, we're definitely in in need to um, I guess what am I trying to say we're trying to, we need to learn better what's happening in the world and there are questions you know people are questioning things more and more and it's important that we do that so uh, ask ask about all of this you know this is what your documentary can present and, and offer to people yeah I think so I, I would I want to so it, you asked me about the stage so I'm I've cleared all of that out because I've already started raising funds for it I am already 10% mm -hmm. through and I started a very healthy competition today with somebody else that's raising the exact same amount for their company so we're racing and we'll see uh, <laughs> that's good <laughs> it is good it, it is going good. yeah 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 so every time he closes um, another one I get pinged <laughs> <laughs> which is good because then I feel I feel it but um, I'm raising the funds and I'm raising the funds from very from partners. I really want people on board that want to help, even though the story is there and we are going to be as journalistic as possible. I'm not going to not go somewhere because it contradicts our thesis. I'm going to find out if we're right. I'm going to actually see. Um, and I'm going to present it in the most fair way possible. But I want to make sure that I have people on board that get it because there have been some people that have been doing it since the beginning that really understand. And those are the people that, although I'm bringing in capital, it's not just fi like financial, it's also intellectual capital. Mm -hmm. So that's the point where as a filmmaker, I have an idea for a story, but I'm bringing in this also, this intellectual capital and making sure that they validate what the story is. And then ultimately we're gonna be interviewing them in the documentary and everything as well. So I wanna make sure I build the right story before I go and 
spend a money, bunch of money in production because I've, I've, I've produced documentaries a lot, so I know how to kind of make them a little cheaper and but look really good. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the goal. Um, so keeping the information solid and quality. Yeah, right. and we going back to my animation background. The anima the it's also going to have a lot of animations. Mm -hmm. oh, describing cool. certain yeah. parts because nice. there are just some things that it's just I'm a very visual person and yeah. I need to be able to see it and we're definitely going to be doing that with the documentary as well so those advisors need to also help you know and then and they are working with us at just making sure that everything that we're presenting is factually correct and is actually going to help the industry okay I like those videos I I learned a lot from videos like that as well and um, I did one. I did a crypto course, actually, a 101 course. And it's, there's animation in it. And it just it helps. It's easy. It helps. It helps to follow along, and you have that visual, especially with a, an abstract, um, you know, thought or like where where with this is for a lot of people. I mean, imagine so. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So you need some money. I need some money. <laughs> um, you definitely have a lot of great contacts and connections very high level so you, I can see you could put together a, a very quality content here I can see that like getting to know you more in, in your space so um, but you need some money and we need investors people we need investors yeah but and we want to premiere I want to premiere by Bitcoin 2023 next year obviously <laughs> okay nice. so that's March that's, goal. that's okay. my goal I want to have a big premiere and one of the ways that I'm raising capital is to sponsor the premiere and by sponsoring the premiere, they're actually helping sponsor the film as well. Okay. That way, companies, if they have marketing budget, they can use their marketing budget towards the film, okay. where you know they probably wouldn't as a as a private investor. So, and then we're going to have a big premiere, and it's going to be just it's not going to be just another party in Miami. It's going to be a film, and it's going to be about right, this. Right. It's going to be a documentary, and then we can go party, you know, after that. But we're going to plan an entire and and I also want to bring other people that are educating in this space you know because some people are in it for the greed and some people are in it for the for the for the spiritual um, or human hum, more humanitarian side and, and or some people are in the middle they see they see both and I one thing that I've discovered from hanging out with different communities is some communities you can feel one vibe more than the other vibe you know mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you understand what I mean mm -hmm. it's like it's just it's just kind of like a different tribe of people that are in crypto um, and I really I feel like I mostly hang out with the ones that are are seeing it as yes we need to make money as an energy source but that's why we want to fix it is because we under we we have a good relationship with money and we want to make sure that we fix this, the the money situation. Yeah. So it's really more from a humanitarian perspective and a decolonization perspective, a libertarian perspective. A, you know, the banks aren't your best friends all the time perspective. Um, but also not all of that, you know. But those are the people that I want to like bring into the space and be a part of our tribe and just continue to have these conversations so that we can keep tabs on Web3 in the way that we didn't for Web2. I feel like with Web2, I had to survive. I had a family, I had to get a job, mm -hmm. I had to like work for whoever paid, you know, whatever the pitch was, I'll find out after we sign the contract. And I feel like a lot of Web2 was that. Mm -hmm. And with what nobody was paying attention to, what are the psychological effects of having children on the iPad all day or having like teenagers on social media? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Exactly. And I feel like whether we're right or wrong or we're like the the, the tree huggers or whatever, we're needed and we need to be together to to see the things that not other that other people would not see. So we're just, I'm not saying we're the only ones that are right, but I'm just saying that we're necessary and we need to be, uh, we need to have those conversations. We certainly do. We certainly do. And this is a great start. We'll yeah. do this again. Yes. I love it. I love it. And um, anything else you want to add to, to where we'll wrap this up? <laughs> and is there anything you missed? You know, I, I value friendships more than anything. Um, so if anybody just wants to reach out and just like be my friend. That's great because <laughs> I, I find that that's where I get inspired by my friends. I like to help my friends. We're actually at a friend's house right now filming. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing that I value the most is the, the people that I spend my time with. So if you 
liked the vibe, <laughs> then reach out because I hang out with other people with the same vibe. It's just kind of what Her I do. The vibe is great. <laughs> yeah, it is great. So yeah, so just join the tribe. I feel like we're starting something great. We were just in Miami a couple of weeks ago and it just feels like there's a lot of momentum, a lot of great people coming together right now that are um, just kind of optimistic about doomsday <laughs> um, so you know if you're one of those people then yeah stay connected stay connected with the like-mindedness of, of especially the creators and the movers and the shakers yes. right yes. Um, and so how can they reach you so um, I have a website that has all my links I'm on Instagram but I'm private on Instagram so it's more like me being weird. Um, Twitter, I'm more crypto. Alana Media Villa, just A L A N A M E D I A V I L L A. Say that very <laughs> slowly now. Alana Media Villa, if I say it with an accent, which is how I say my name, or Alana Media Villa. Media Villa. There we go. So and I will have that in the description below. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. But that's it. And I hope that, thank you. If, if they watched it until at this point, I would love for them to type in the comments the name of their favorite fruit. Okay. So the name of your favorite fruit, everybody. Please. Just to see who watched it until this Check part. that in. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that for sure. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thank you. Pleasure. Mm, I'm really, really <laughs> <hot>. mm. <laughs>